Hi guys. Hi guys, we're back. It will be Nate time, the Hi September 2022 edition. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're not new here, you know that my name is MJ. I'm your host, and with me here is Cheers I'm Dim. I'm also not new. <laughs> that's true, that's true, that's true. Thank you for joining us once again. So, why are we here? You know, as our custom is, we're here to recap all that we learned in the month of September. You know, just go through all that we were taught. So the teaching series for the month of September was The, the Good, Good Shepherd. Shepherd. Oh my goodness. Pastor Ken revealed God's character as a good shepherd in healing, provision, and leading. So how was the month for you? Okay, so for the, me, the month was refreshing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would say that the month was refreshing was um, I was reminded of the character of God in different ways things that i knew but my convictions were just strengthened so it was just good to go over those things you know about god and not just knowing them but seeing them in scripture so yeah. it was a good month yeah that's great honestly it was an amazing month so just let's not do too much let's just go straight into the first teaching for the month and the first teaching for the month was solely theo, theo gloria, gloria. Hallelujah. So, cheers um what does that mean because i mean we're not really greek people like that so what does it mean? okay <laughs> So first things first, Soli Deo Gloria is not Greek. I don't know why Jay thinks it's Greek, but it's Latin. And um, just to give you a backstory, there's something called the Five Solars. Mm -hmm. And the Five Solars came into existence after the Protestant Reformation. A lot of backstory and it's quite interesting. You can do your research on how the Protestant Reformation came about. Or you can go back to the teaching. Pastor Ken gave his own share, fair share of like the story, right? Mm -hmm. But um, just tips there were a couple of people um there was the church was once united like there was just one church leadership mm -hmm. for the christian faith yeah. and because that that was the case there were a couple of discrepancies with what these people taught because and what these people taught and what was in scriptures and because of the congregation had limited access to scriptures people couldn't really object to these things but people who were in positions of authority and had access to scripture came up with um we have, we're privileged actually to study scriptures and see that oh these things that we are told here for example pain for penance and all that for sins and all that for the forgiveness of sins was not consistent with scripture so the protestant reformation came about and they came up with five solars of the christian faith and five solars are sola gratia sola fide solus christus Sola Scriptura and then Soli Deo Gloria. So you see where we get the scripture from. So just so that you're not lost, remember I said it's Latin and just to tell you what they mean. Okay, so the meaning of Sola Gratia is grace alone, Sola Fide, through faith alone, Solus Christus, in Christ alone, then Sol, um, Sola Scriptura means according to scripture alone, then Soli Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone. In quote, so you read them together you would see like it forms like a sentence and i'm not going to do that for you that you do it yourself <laughs> anyways yes so that is the summary of how the title soli deo gloria came to be okay that's honestly awesome as she said just piece it together or listen to the sermon all right so what else did we learn in that teaching please okay so we also learned about god's character remember what i said it was really a month on strengthening convictions on the character of god mm -hmm. and we learned about um the fact that god is man-centered right you can see in creation that before man came to be before god made man he made animals he made water he made the earth he made light he made everything that man would need so that when man came into the scene everything they need was already available mm -hmm. and you would also see in new creation not only at the initial creation in new creation when jesus gave us new life from and delivered us from sin you would see that god was also a providential god he taught about us and in advance when we're still seen as christ died for us mm -hmm. but as much as this is the character of god as much as he's interested in you and as much as he thinks about you god is self-centered so the fact that he's man-centered, his man-centeredness leads up to the fact that he is God-centered. Mm -hmm. And he's permitted to be because he's God. He's the only one that is permitted to be I mean, self-centered exactly. in the entire story. So that's one thing you see. And I'll explain this to you. I'll use scriptures like um, Psalms 23, 
the popular Psalm 23, and now we go to verse 3, it tells us about how he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Other versions would put it as us. he um, leads us in the right path to bring honor to his name. Mm -hmm. So the reason why God is leading you in the right path is not to bring honor to his name, right? It's not really, as much as it's beneficial to you, it is for his glory, mm -hmm. right? So that is the self-centeredness of God, where everything he does is for his glory. Yeah. Mm, that's that's amazing. But you know, it's it's an unpopular opinion because I mean everyone says, Oh, God loves me. Mm -hmm. And so like please can you like shed more light on this thing so that we see it in scripture, like there are more scriptures that we can see, you know, the God centeredness of God. Okay, so MJ's question is really valid because yes, I would agree with her that it's an open or an unpopular opinion. You don't hear so many people talk about the self centeredness of God as much as they talk about what God has done for them right and how much he cares about them but god is actually self-centered you would see in isaiah chapter 49 that god created us for his glory mm -hmm. if you go to psalm 106 you also see the fact that god called israel for his glory yeah. and even in john chapter 14 verse 13 it tells you that i'm whatever you ask in my name i will do so that the father may be glorified in the son mm -hmm. so jesus tells you that he will answer your prayers to bring glory to god so mm -hmm. everything that happens here is for the glory of god yeah. And I hope I've been able to like give more clarity on that. Yeah, you definitely have. So I, that leads me to my next question. So what does that mean for us as children of God? Okay, so what that means for us children of God is that we need to be God-centered. Mm -hmm. you understand it means that your eyes need to be fixed on god that whatever you're doing should be done to the glory of god i'll mm -hmm. give reference to first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 that tells you whatever you do whether you're eating whether you're drinking do it to the glory of god right everything mm -hmm. should be done now that you are aware that god is self-centered you should do everything in your thinking it even it, jesus even brings sorry the writer of first corinthians even brings it to the mundane things like things like eating that you may not even do consciously it tells you that when you're eating when you're drinking water you should be doing it to the glory of god so it's a consciousness to carry yeah and you know earlier when you were talking you mentioned how that even if god is god-centered it's beneficial for us so can you mm -hmm. share examples along this slide okay so i'll share examples because one thing to note too is that when you're saying God is self-centered, it's like, ah, does that mean God is selfish? He doesn't care about us. But I've already shown you that he cares about you, right? Yeah. And I would expand on that more because an example I'll give is for Paul. You would mm -hmm. see that someone like Paul, he went through great persecution. When Paul was called in Acts chapter 9, you'd see how Ananias, God told Ananias that he was going to suffer great persecution. And please don't think it is because of he persecuted people god had forgiven him but because of the nature of his call because of the work he had been called to do mm -hmm. and the work of evangelism and to take the gospel to the ends of the earth it was going to come with persecution yeah. right god told him that and paul kept on telling god about how there was a thorn in his flesh right there was a thorn in his flesh that needed to be taken out that that was affecting him and he asked god to take it away several times but what did god do God didn't take it away because it was his lot as a believer. As a believer, you're called to persecution. That's just mm -hmm. the truth of the matter, right? Mm -hmm. But as much as God didn't take away the persecution, God gave him strength. So God answered that prayer with strength and also brought glory to his name because souls were still saved through Paul. Yeah. Another example I'll give is Joseph. If you go to scriptures, you'd see that in Exodus, Joseph... <clears throat> sorry, in Genesis, Joseph, the son of Jacob, was sown by his brothers into slavery and he went to egypt and he suffered he was in prison went through all that he went through potiphar's wife and someone will be like ah where is god this god that was giving him dreams upon dreams right where is this god yes god didn't send him his brothers did not like him and they sent sold him out to slavery right god has given his brothers free will so they had to they did that with, out of their own will yep. but as much as that was the case god knew and saw all that joseph was where joseph was going through and god mm -hmm. delivered him mm -hmm. that's just the truth of the matter god raised him to a position where he was governor of egypt from being someone that was not even part of that nation or part of the people there god raised him to a position of authority and as much as god raised him to a position of authority and it was beneficial to him that is joseph himself i want you to also see that it was part of god's grand scheme to bring about the messiah which is jesus because 
because Joseph was saved, because Joseph was lifted to that position, his family could be delivered from famine mm -hmm. when they came into Egypt looking for help and looking for assistance. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you see that because through Israel, which is his entire family lineage, Jesus, the Messiah, was going to come, God was glorified. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't confuse you, but <laughs> if you want to understand it better, head over to the teaching. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So that's what I asked. Is there anything else we can learn from the teaching? Okay, so... Yeah, there's so many other things we, we learned about the teaching, about how we could give glory to God, right? How we could give glory to God. But I would not tell you. <laughs> not like I don't want to tell you, but I want you to go to the teaching because it would do you great good if you listen to everything wholesome. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to give you bits and pieces. I've given you a lot of bits and pieces and hints and <laughs> stuff to just draw your attention. So... <laughs> I'm not going to share that with you. Go back to teaching and see more for yourself. Nice, nice. Suspense for me. As you heard that, go to the teaching and learn a lot. All right, so over to the second teaching in the series, Rohi. Another non English word. Anyway, I'm not going to say what word it is. Tears down, please. Let us know the meaning. Okay, so Rohi is a Hebrew word and it means. Um, shepherd right um you also see el ruhi and el ruhi means a god that sees so as much as it means shepherd it means a god that sees you mm -hmm. and i would also expand on that making reference to um psalms um 23 right mm -hmm. in psalms 23 you would see how the bible tells us that the lord is your shepherd you shall not want the lord is your shepherd right that is ruhi he is your ruhi <laughs> if i put it like that mm -hmm. and then you shall not want he makes us a light on in green pastures he leads us beside still waters he restores our soul he leads mm -hmm. us in the path of righteousness right yeah. so god being the good shepherd we can evidently see in psalm 23 from like verse 1 to 3 that god is interested in leading us mm. right yeah. if god sees you he's interested in leading you if god is your good shepherd he tells you that he's willing to lead you in the path of righteousness mm. he's willing to show you how to go right mm -hmm. so this teaching was mainly focused on god the good shepherd that leads us right yeah mm -hmm. honestly that's i think that that is so beautiful the fact that god is the good shepherd and you know, also thank you for backing that up with scripture i think another thing that you know this will come up like it's a general question that most believers mm -hmm. have is okay so god leads here well how does god lead me or how does god lead us you know that's a very yeah i think it's Anyone that becomes a Christian would have to ask themselves that question because yeah. you jolly hear one more say, Oh, so the Lord led me, the Lord said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who talks like that, but I don't know where I got that from, but he just came. Anyways, yeah. um, you hear different people say different things. So maybe you go on social media and say that the Lord led me to do this. I heard the voice of the Lord in the in the midst of the all those things they shy to say, but anyways, how does God lead? Mm -hmm. So there were there are diverse manners in which God leads, and I don't think mm -hmm. you can even box or put all of them in a box and say if God does not lead you through this, 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 and this, then God does not lead you. Mm -hmm. I believe there are so many ways that may not even be um, emphasized, yeah. right? But God also leads in those ways, right? It mm -hmm. can be very, very mundane things, things that you don't expect. But in this teaching, we are dressed like about six of them and mm -hmm. i will just be speaking on three of them so one way i'll be speaking about one primary way that god leads and i would always ask that whatever god leads you to do you'd always refer back to for confirmation is mm -hmm. the word of god yeah. so god leads through his word the word of god he has like god has spoken so god is leading <laughs> you through it right yeah. and the word of God can be seen in two ways, his verbal word and his written word. So now I want to understand um, what is the, the opinion of God as a believer to marrying an unbeliever. Can I go ahead and marry anybody, someone who does not hold to my belief system or my faith or my values as a Christian? Is that fine? Like, bro, I can save the person rights by doing that in quotes. <laughs> my dear, go and read your Bible. <laughs> That's an example of what the written word would do for mm -hmm. you. The written word would reveal that the Bible tells us to be un we should not be unequally yoked, right? Mm -hmm. That we shouldn't be with people that don't hold to the same values with us. I can't. And that scripture that you can even, people used to buttress this, is can two work together if they don't agree, right? Yeah. Right? So, things like that, you can see that for so many things that people need clarity for, just by studying scriptures, mm -hmm. they would receive clarity. So, read your Bible. Next thing I'll say is the verbal word of God. An example mm -hmm. I would give is Samuel. And you know the story, right? 
and I was sleeping, someone was sleeping, someone here, someone, someone, and then ah, he went to meet Eli. How for bros? Like, oh, no, <laughs> no, bros, please. Oh, God. <laughs> he went to meet him. What's happening? You're, I'm hearing you call me, and he told him, please go and sleep. I'm not calling you. You're most likely J dreaming. But Eli, being a man of the spirit, was able to discern after multiple accounts of that happening that, oh, this is the voice of God, right? And then from that story, you can also see that the voice of God can be very ordinary, that it's not even something so spectacular. It's not something that sounds like that deep voice that everybody thinks is the voice of God. <laughs> yeah, but he heard it in Eli's voice, right? Yeah. So that being the case, God leads through his verbal word. And God still does that to today. It hasn't ceased. I said, mm-hmm. remember what I said at the beginning? You can't really box, um, box the leading of God and say, it doesn't happen like this. It happened. No, you can't really say that. Yeah. So another major way I'll say that God leads is through his church, right? I'll make reference to Acts chapter um, 13. And you see how a couple of believers or leaders in the church came together and were praying. And then the word of God tells you that Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, that you see that the Holy Spirit said as they were praying. Mm-hmm. So in the midst of their prayers, the Holy Spirit spoke. And he didn't tell you, I don't personally believe the Holy Spirit spoke in an audible voice, right? But through the midst of the people that were gathered there, mm-hmm. the leading of God came and told them to separate unto me, Paul and Balabas from the work that would lie ahead. So you can see that because they were praying together in the midst of their fellowship as brothers and sisters in the faith, the mm-hmm. Spirit of God led them to separate people for a work that he had them to do. So that's one way God leads. If you need leading, go in the midst of believers. You would surely find leading and get confirmation for whatever you're believing God is saying. Mm-hmm. You could always call your brothers and sisters and say, oh, I heard the Lord say this to me, but I need confirmation, and I know He's not scared of confirming His word. I want you to pray with me and get clarity on this. So mm-hmm. that's the case. And one other thing I will make emphasis to is your preferences. God can lead through your dislikes, your likes, your passions. Through something you do not like so much, God can really mm-hmm. use it to stir up a work in your heart. I'll give an example of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the kind of person that he and the Israelites, remember, they went on exile to the um land of babylon right and when they returned from exile the wall of jerusalem had to be rebuilt and nobody had done that the temple had been rebuilt but the land of jerusalem the wall city wall hadn't been rebuilt and nehemiah when he was told about that he was grieved he fasted he prayed he mourned nobody does that if you hear that the wall of nigeria goes down (laughs) will you do that and then it happened over a period of time and Mm -hmm. after four months we could also still see that this is Nehemiah chapter 2 now, because this happened in Nehemiah chapter 1, that after the, when the king saw him, the king could discern that something is bothering this guy. Mm-hmm. And you could see that God had used that as in his heart, had mm-hmm. placed it in his heart for something to do. Because if you keep reading, you still see in chapter 2 that God inspired me to go and build the wall. So God never spoke, really. There was never written anywhere Nehemiah would build the wall, right? Mm-hmm. But he could discern that by the occurrences and the things that were happening, it was by the inspiration of God that he had been sent to do that work. So God did see your preferences. There are so many other ones, but I'll stop here for now. Check the teaching. <laughs> all right, and that was so insightful. I mean, all the examples, like even listening to that, I just went back to the teaching. I'm like, God is so good. Yeah. So anyway, so what, I believe this now begs the question of fact that what are misconceptions about God's leading? True, they are, as much as God leads, you don't have to get the reading of God wrong, right? Where first misconception, there are two major ones. The first one I'll speak about is the fact that God will do all the work. So God has sent you to do something, you're expecting him to push you. Or I'll give an example. God has said that those who would have his spirit would speak in tongues. I expect him to open your mouth and I don't know how you expect it to happen, but maybe, I don't know. But that's an example, right? Mm-hmm. Or... God sent Paul, called Paul and Barnabas for a work in Acts chapter 13. Mm-hmm. And you're expecting, oh, God has called them for this work now. That means God will tell them, oh, yeah, arise. Now move. <laughs> it's not going to happen like that. Yeah. Watch what Paul and Barnabas did. Once the leading came, they kept praying. And then the minute happened, they went out and they kept on going on the work that God told them to do. It was mm-hmm. until chapters later that more clarity came that God was calling them to specifically to the Gentiles, to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Even when they were going and they were moving in the wrong direction, God was able to say, no, stop here. I'm not sending you there. I'm sending you here. So 
what when you get the leading of god you don't expect god to move you or a force to push you you should expect that you act on it because god has already spoken yeah. then as you act more leading would come but don't mm-hmm. expect that god will do everything for you the second one is that god would go before you and this is something everyone believes right but i want to know that this scripture about god going before us is from exodus chapter 33 verse 14 to 16 in the old testament but that was a time when the spirit of god was in selected few and the spirit of god hadn't been poured out upon all men as joel prophesied but mm-hmm. now that we have received the spirit christ has come the spirit of god dwells in everybody now and the spirit of god is always before you so you don't always expect you don't expect god to leave you and go ahead he's in you he's with you he's present with you so he's mm-hmm. going with you as you move he goes mm-hmm. so that's another thing you need to learn so what else did we learn okay so what else did we learn hmm. We learned a couple of lessons from Psalm 23, and yeah. you need to go and listen. I know you're familiar with reciting Psalm 23, but these are lessons that are brought out one by one that I would say that you would need in times of confusion and all that. So you can head over to teaching to find out that. And that thing that I'll just say is that we have a purpose why we are here. Every Christian has the same purpose, the same way all virus have one purpose, right? And that is to know God and to make Him known. Yeah. And one way that god helps you accomplish this purpose is that he gives us individual assignments to help us drive and move in the direction of purpose right Mm -hmm. and don't ever be scared we've revealed that god is willing to lead god Mm -hmm. is el rohi the god that sees you the god that is a good shepherd he's willing to lead you so this assignment that would enable you fulfill purpose don't ever be questioning would god reveal it to me why would God not want to let you know something he wants you to do, right? I think, why, why would he be keeping something that he knows would fulfill, or would make him happy if you do it? So I need you to remember this, that God is willing to lead you. Yeah, thank you so much for that reminder, and even the recaps as a whole. So now, the third teaching in the series, I think this is one, I don't think one of my favorites, I mean, every teaching is always amazing, but this one really struck hope for me in that season. And the title was Jaira. Don't worry. This time, I'm not teaching as well because I know the meaning. So Jaira, <laughs> you're my provider. Eh, eh. Yeah, so Jaira <laughs> means provider. So Jaira, um, please introduce us to the next teaching. Okay. Um. So Angie has already told us the title, which is Jaira, and yeah. she knows the meaning. I guess you know the meaning too, which means <laughs> provider, right? Yeah. And I'll make a reference to where you can see this. I one place it was mentioned was in Genesis when in Genesis 18 when God provided a lamb for Abraham to mm-hmm. make his sacrifice instead of Isaac right you would also see that God is your provider the Bible says in Psalm 23 scripture I've been referencing a lot mm-hmm. says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want meaning that I, you will not lack mm-hmm. that what it means God to be your provider yeah. so With this knowledge and with this consciousness that you will not lack, I want to let you know that God provides in multiple ways. The first thing I'll say is that God provides in advance. And one area that is very clear is in your salvation. The Bible tells us that when we're still sinners, Christ died for us. That even before we saw the need for salvation, God made it available, right? And God knew that man was going to fall and made a provision and for us in christ jesus like he brought about the salvation plan right even before the foundations of the world and some people may now ask that doesn't that mean that god orchestrated everything he made everything happen but for knowledge doesn't mean predestination i want you to take note of that so moving on as much as that's the case um god provides in advance as i've stated he also provides in abundance right the bible tells us that Blessed be the God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, that we have all spiritual blessings. That if there's any spiritual blessing that is in Christ, we have access to it, yeah. right? So anyone who is a child of God has access to it. So you can see that God actually provides in abundance, right? And an example is with Elijah. Elijah, remember he prayed and there was no rain, right? After he did that, it seemed to he was hungry with everybody. <laughs> but God was so intentional that he sent ravens to Elijah to provide meat for him, right? And even when there were no more ravens, he sent him to a widow who provided for him. Mm-hmm. So you can see that 
God actually provides in advance. Another thing I would let you know is that God provides for the assignment. That if there's anything that God has told you to do or has called you to do, he would provide it. I made an example. I gave an example that I can use to use again here at the beginning about with the situation of Abraham. God told Abraham, carry Isaac, go and kill him, make him, make him be a sacrifice unto me. And Abraham, without question, went ahead to do it because he knew that if this God that told me he was going to give me this son, gave me this son, and he said that through this son, nations are going to arise, right? Mm -hmm. And his descendants will be as plenty and as many as the stars of the sky and the sands on the seashore. Mm -hmm. That means this God is able to raise this guy from the dead or provide for him. And God saw Abraham's faith and provided a lamp, right? Made a lamp available, and that's where Abraham got called called um, God his provider, mm -hmm. right? And that person you'd see is Paul. Like, Paul went through persecution. Nobody can... <laughs> nobody <laughs> comes that. close. And nobody comes close. Nobody can literally measure up to Paul's persecution. But one thing I want to let you know is that as much as Paul went through all that, you could see God's hand in keeping him through mm -hmm. and providing for him throughout the assignment that he gave him to do in this world, regardless of the persecution. Right, okay. and that way God provides is in spite of. Mm. We need to know that God doesn't provide for you because you've been good, mm. right? Many of us are of the opinion, or not even necessarily of the opinion, but we have this consciousness that ah, because I've done this now, God, I don't pray today. I've done this one. <laughs> you've done this. You've evangelized. You've yeah. won his soul. Mm -hmm. So that 5.0 GPA should be yours, right? <laughs> That's mindset. Yeah. Or you come to God saying, ah, God knows if you provide for me. Oh, like, <laughs> as a big movie, you go and you just hear them say things like, God cannot provide for me. I've messed mm -hmm. up too bad to mm -hmm. be provided for. So I assess my faith, yeah. right? But one thing we need to know that God provides in spite of. And one way we see that is in salvation. And I know that we reference salvation a lot, but it's a great example that we didn't do anything but god saved us we didn't ask to be saved right mm -hmm. we didn't choose to be saved we didn't say we wanted to be saved but god was like okay even if nobody chooses to coming to come to me through my son i'll make him available so in case one day they see and see the need they would come in through my son right so mm -hmm. in spite of whatever you've done i want to let you know that god provides you see me the israelites they were very rebellious people and some 78, you would see how rebellious they were, like literally consistently disobeying God. And I'm not saying I'm better, but like you would see with the Israelites consistently disobeying God, repent today, next tomorrow they are back. And you just be like, how? But God was so intentional that he still kept them. He still provided for them. They still needed food. He made it available. The manner they needed, he made available. The water they needed, he made available, right? Yeah. So God provides in spite of however you're going to act, in spite of whatever you've done. He's Jaira. He's your provider. Yeah, and you know, I, th I want to even draw a caveat here because it seems like whenever we hear, oh, provider, people just lean towards money. So when we say, oh, there's providence, is it just about money or... Just no, like the, the the provision of God is wealth. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll I'll call you wealth, right? Because it's it's it goes it spreads to different areas of life, different mm -hmm. things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. For example, I gave you different ways in which God provides for an assignment that God has given you. We necessarily not need money, mm -hmm. right? What you would need is even if you need money, God will not put multiply your bank account. Mm -hmm. He would bring people that mm -hmm. you would need. Yeah. that would provide the resources right for example yeah. someone that has been has a call to be an apostle and ministry is not cheap we know that like it's, it's not cheap in but any way but god will bring partners people that will partner with you yeah. and that would partner even with their financial resources but I, I was giving that as an example that sometimes even for the work you don't even need money at all you just you just need people yeah. for example you may be downcast you may be in a bad place and people think god's provision is only about your needs but it even extends to you, even with the needs of like, God, I'm in a bad place. Mm -hmm. I need some encouragement. God would send somebody your way or speak to this person mm -hmm. or call this person, this this fellow believer. There's something wrong with that. God would lay your name in the heart of another believer to call you, right? And to meet your need in that way. So it's not mm -hmm. only money. The Bible tells us that God is able to provide all our needs according to his riches in glory. Yeah. These, these needs are not only in, in terms of 
money or paper money, that kind of thing. No, mm -hmm. it's 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 extensive. It's in yeah. different manner. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I think another thing is, you know, when you were talking about God leading in spite of, I think it now brings a question that most people now have. Okay. So what happens when God does not answer my prayer? Because I mean, <laughs> if you can relate, put in comments. Because mm -hmm. like sometimes you, you pray and you're not even focusing on what you do. You're just praying to God, hoping for this and that, but then it doesn't happen. So do you have an answer for things like, oh, was that treated in the teaching? Okay, so Pastor Kenneth addressed that, and I'm mm -hmm. grateful to God that he did. Yeah. So yes, we are like, oh God, I've I've already romanced your mind, right? I've showed you that ah, God they provide regardless, mm -hmm. in spite of in for every Nabona everywhere He shall provide, mm -hmm. and I've shown you an example. So you have reason to go to God. God, that bears. <laughs> I saw an IG yesterday, <laughs> right? But. As much as we ask God for those things, there's this there's this part of us that's like, hmm, God really do Answer it. Me. But there's one thing I want you to know, let you know is that when it comes to the providence of God, you need to note one thing is that you need to work with the timing of God. That's mm -hmm. one thing I would say. Right? Um as much as you're working with the timing of God, you need to let go of your own calendar because sometimes we put God in a timeline where you're like, God if you don't provide this thing by the end of the day, you're like, it's over with me and you. My relationship with you, like, you're the one that is like, God is begging you now. <laughs> but I tell him, God, our relationship is over. Over to other other gods. Other gods that can hate my life. <laughs> Those are digital lines now, bro. Once sure. God doesn't do, they move over to other gods. They're out. They check out. But God's timing is not something you should put in your own timeline. You can't really say god this is where you should be it's god does things at his own time and he does it at the best time and exactly. you need to trust that mm -hmm. so i want you to know that when you're asking god for something you need to learn to go over your timelines and be sure that you're working with god's timeline and you're patient mm -hmm. enough with him so when he intends to deliver because that's the best time he will deliver and be beneficial to you but another thing i want to let you go before you even let go of your timeline the bible says in first john chapter 5 from verse 13 that that if we ask God for anything in accordance with his will, he's able to provide for us, right? Yeah. So one thing you really need to know is that amongst all you're asking God, mm -hmm. what is the motivation? What is exactly. the heart behind the asking? Mm -hmm. The Benz example I gave, why do I need a Benz right now, really? Why? Like, why do I why need Benz? one? <laughs> right? And don't, that doesn't mean God doesn't provide good things. Remember, all good and perfect gifts come from the Father of lights, yeah. right? So God provides good things, but the question is why? Is it from the place of selfish ambition? James chapter 4 verse 3 will tell you that you ask so that you consume it upon your own loss, right? So mm -hmm. is that why you're asking God for what you're asking? Is it from the place of selfish ambition? So you check yourself. Mm -hmm. Is it to purpose somebody else and show people that you've arrived, right? Is yeah, that why <laughs> Is that why you're asking God for that thing so mm -hmm. that, ah, that iPhone that you're asking God for, is it so that, ah, Oh, they will know that I'm, they will, eh? They, are, they have to. No, what is this <laughs> point? point? So, check, check the motivation. Mm -hmm. What is the motivation? Is it in accordance with the will of God? Mm -hmm. Right? It's different when you're asking God for partners for a work He's called you to do. Right? He, sometimes, even when you're asking God for partners, it may not be then that you need the partners, and that's where the timing of God comes in. I know right now, what I want to say is that is it failure on your part? Where, okay, yes, the timing, you're waiting on God's timing, your asking is appropriate, right? But you've not put in the work, right? Mm. God only blesses the works of our hands. Mm. But when there are no works of your hands to bless, then God has nothing to favor, right? So that's one thing you need to let know. Yeah, oh my goodness. I'm very sure someone needed to hear that. And it was not sweet, but as we know, the truth is not sweet. So yeah, thank you so much for that. I think, do you have anything else you would like to share with us? Okay, so um, I want to let you know that there's a disposition to have. If you read through Matthew chapter 6, it tells you about the birds of the sky and the grass in the field mm -hmm. that are so beautiful, the power flowers that are so beautiful, but they don't worry like you do, all right? The birds that today they are here, tomorrow they are dead, flowers mm -hmm. that are burnt up in old ones. They don't literally worry, but God takes care of them. How much more you that is valuable to him? How much more you that you're his child? 
So I want you to rest in the fact that God is your provider and he's able to meet your needs, right? Don't go about trying to worry and giving yourself unnecessary headache. Rest in that reality. Mm-hmm. Another reason why I'll tell you this is because sometimes we can even think that, oh, God is tired. Maybe he, has, he needs, he has met today. The list is so long. Ah, he needs to rest. Maybe he needs to take a night rest. Tomorrow he will rejuvenate and then he's back to work. That's not God. That's God is all-powerful. Mm-hmm. And I want to give you an example of Jesus with Mary and Martha. That when Jesus went to their house, he was exhausted. And Mary, Martha knowing he was exhausted, went to, ah, Jesus is exhausted. Let me give him food or my visitor. Let me cater for him. Mm-hmm. Mary went to now sit down beside Jesus and ask Jesus questions. Martha was like, this girl is not right. Can't she see how Jesus is? But Jesus told Martha that Mary had chosen the good part. So you'd see that Jesus is still willing to give even when he's exhausted. It shows you the, the character of God when it comes to providence. That no matter how much he's giving, no matter how much he's poured out to people, mm-hmm. he's always willing to give. God, Jesus never turned down anybody that came with faith and was ready to be healed. Mm-hmm. No matter how tired he was, he still, he still was able to meet that need. So mm-hmm. don't ever think that God is too tired. God has met so many needs for the day. The list has closed for today. Maybe like embassy people dead to come back tomorrow. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. Honestly, this was so beautiful. Especially the fact that you know, at this position should be rest. Because someone will hear this now and be like, okay, God provides something. So that means he's going to provide now, now, now. Like, just chill, chill. Like, it's like when you ask your daddy for money and you know that your dad has a track record of giving you money. So when you ask him, I know it's come back, I'm like, oh, daddy, just to remind you about the money. <laughs> you chill. Like, every five minutes, you won't do that. So, honestly, it was such a beautiful teaching. And you, you think we've discussed a lot. Go and listen to the teaching. It's bless you in no small way. So, now to the next teaching in the series. And this is another non English word, and it's Rafa. And it's such a beautiful word because. I mean, it's something that we see a lot in the scriptures and also even, I mean, 2020 that everyone was praying for and it is healing. So, Chaz, and please let, talk, tell us about Rafa. Okay, so the last teaching for the one that NJ mentioned is Rafa. And I think this is another popular one. Jehovah Rafa, everyone knows this term. And it means my healer, God that he, God that heals, right? And you would see it in several places in scripture that God's healing is actually complete and it's also rich like it extends to tangible things and intangible things it's spread mm-hmm. across different areas god actually he uses emotional healing um spiritual healing and salvation mental healing and all that right physical healing too god heals and um for example it also shows that god heals scriptures to buttress this point jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 you can check it out right psalm 23 will also tell you that jesus that god restores our souls right so that's evident that god heals and there's also good news about healing is that first of all healing is complete and it is wholesome as i mentioned earlier right if you see psalm 103 verse 33 i tell you that he heals all our diseases when it tells you to not forget the benefits of god and one of those benefits that god heals all our diseases so it's something to carry as a consciousness that god actually heals and he also gives us peace and security then um another thing i would say about the good the good news about healing is that it is the will of god for us right mm-hmm. many people think that or the, uh, the opinion that oh i'm i'm sick right now because god is probably punishing me for one thing or the other that i did but i'm like if that's the case then why did jesus die then why did jesus have to die if god could pun- if god wanted to punish us for our sins then would have just taken the punishment and then jesus would have peacefully not have gone to the cross but to say that is to deny the validity of the sacrifice of christ right mm-hmm. but one thing i want to let you know is that the bible says in acts chapter 10 verse 38 that jesus went about how god anointed jesus with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the enemy because god was with him so if god um, in Jesus went about doing these things, healing everybody. There was no person, as I said, that came to Jesus that was sick mm-hmm. and he didn't heal. If that's the case, then why do you assume that healing, of, healing is not the will of God for you? Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, please, I hope I've been able to debunk that misconception because it's not true. God, no matter what you've done, remember God is Jairus. He provides an abundance. Healing is part of his providence towards mm-hmm. us, right? 
So I want you to know that no matter what you've done, in spite of it, if it comes to forgiveness, God has forgiven you in Christ if you're a believer mm -hmm. and God is willing to heal you. And that good news about healing is that it's the children's bread. And I'm sure you're like, ah, what is this? Some people, you may have heard this phrase, but some people may not have heard it. But in case you're wondering, head over to Mark chapter um, 15, verse 22 to 29, or head over to the podcast and listen to the teaching to understand what it means that healing is a children's bread. Yeah. Okay, so like I love the fact that you even mentioned healing to children's bread because you need to go and check it out. I, I'm saying this because we know some things that people have attached to that you know term, and aside from even what people have attached, we here we emphasize the importance of understanding, like being able to give a defense for your faith. So don't just hear how words, go and check it in the sermon and also check it in the word for yourself. So that brings me to my next question. What are the requirements for healing? Okay, so the requirements for healing, the first one I would say is the faith of the recipient. Mm -hmm. um, for you to be able to receive a healing, you have to believe that God can heal you. Yeah. If you don't believe that God can heal you, automatically the healing wouldn't be possible, right? Mm -hmm. It's the faith that you express for healing that God acts on, right? Mm -hmm. um, second thing that you need is the faith of the mediator. And what I would say about this fact is the fact that you see that um, someone like the centurion himself stood in faith for his servant and his servant was healed. Yeah. Lazarus was dead, but his siblings believed and the healing took place. So even if the person that is sick doesn't believe, or not necessarily doesn't believe, even if the person that is sick um, isn't present to receive the healing. Someone yeah. else can stand in the, in the gap for them in the place of faith mm -hmm. and they would receive a healing. Yeah. Next thing I would say is the faith of the healer. The Bible says in Mark 16, 17 that you'd lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And this is referring mm -hmm. to those who believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So anyone who believes has the ability to perform um, a healing or to heal someone and you don't just heal for healing's sake. You have to have faith that you can heal the person mm -hmm. and then you would see healing take place when, yeah. when you play, put your faith to action. Lastly is a good God. Scriptures will tell you in multiple places in the Gospels that Jesus was moved to compassion. And because he was moved to compassion, he healed people, mm -hmm. right? Um, even with Lazarus, he rose Lazarus from the dead because he was moved. He could see the heart of God, the love of God expressed. So those are the major requirements for healing. All right. Thank you so much for that. I know that now even comes brings a question to mind. Is, mm -hmm. Are there any extremes to this thing? Like when sorry, not thing to this concept, the healing power of God. Yeah. Okay, so for the healing power of God, people can be extreme, right? Because um I want to let you know that one major misconception or one major extreme that people have is that they can miracles can happen for anything and then they tend to use miracles to replace place their natural responsibilities mm -hmm. but miracles would never replace your natural responsibilities you yeah. need to know that as much as the healing power is available for you doesn't mean you won't take care of yourself doesn't mean you won't take care of your body yeah. you should do as expected right mm -hmm. that is one thing you need to know then the second thing i'm going to say is that um healing is not miracles are not your entitlement it happens by the grace of god people feel yeah. entitled that how dare god not to heal me mm -hmm. how dare you say that <laughs> right so healing is not your entitlement. entitlement and lastly one thing i also want to say is that healing happens through one channel and that's faith one mm -hmm. channel and one channel alone and people yes believe that anointing oil heals them mantles heal them handkerchiefs shadows can heal right and we see that in scripture but one thing i want to let you know is that in mark chapter 5 when it was referenced when the writer in james chapter 5 sorry when the writer of james himself was saying that um, anoint people that were sick. He said the prayer of faith made would heal the person. Mm -hmm. So if that prayer of faith is not made, if faith is not on the line, there will be no healing communicated. Mm -hmm. So all those things only are channels for healing when faith is present. So yeah. whoever is expecting a healing through an anointed oil is still expressing faith to so receive that healing. And if there's no faith and you're just looking at the oil that the oil will heal you, then it won't happen. Mm -hmm. Faith remains the only channel through which healings happen. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And even something you said earlier, you know, mm -hmm. how the fact that we have healing hands, we have the power of God to heal. Mm -hmm. So let us know how we can heal people. Like, how can I heal people? Okay. So how do you heal people? The first thing I'm going to let you know is that you need to um, believe in the power of God. 
these signs shall follow you if you want to perform a healing mark 16 17 has to be on your mind per time you need to have this scripture in your heart and not just in your head it's something mm -hmm. you need to believe every single day that yes the power of god is available and it's at work in me and it can heal people through me right that's the one thing that you need to know yeah. the second thing i'm going to say is that you should prepare in the place of prayer so yes we have the power of god god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to his power that is at work in us right mm -hmm. very true Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 but i also want to let you know that the power of god the bible tells you also in james chapter 5 that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available so so make power available as much as power is in you it is potential that power that is potential for it to become kinetic you mm. need to stir it up in the place of prayer so right <laughs> you need to stir it up in the place of prayer you need to do the conversion in the place of prayer it mm. happens when you pray when you pray you stir up boldness you stir up the power of god and it is really it is released to do whatever it's meant to do to heal whoever it's meant to heal and lastly the next thing i'm going to say or not lastly sorry but next thing i'm going to say is lay hands right mm -hmm. these signs shall follow you you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover your hands are channels for healing the power of god is at work in your hands so these hands you would lay them on people and you see them recover jesus also laid hands on people and they received healing through that mm -hmm. manner and lastly i would say stay to your series so you don't just say mj in the name of jesus be healed and if you yes it works please it works but mm -hmm. if you don't see it you need to stay you stay and say stay on the word of god i agree with the word of god if this is what the word of god says i believe it right elijah believed that he could the same way he called he brought about famine and he said it would not rain for three years he believed that he could pray again and mm -hmm. he would see rain come and he stayed he prayed seven times till he saw rain come and he saw a sound like he had like a hand in the sky and then he was like ah rain is coming go and tell the king that let the water not catch him where he, wherever he is so mm -hmm. he stayed you see an example of a man that stayed mm -hmm. do you understand so yeah. one thing i want to let you know is that you should be ready to stay so that you would see healing happen mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much for that and just that I, I would like us to address the fact that sometimes you do all of these things you lay hands you have faith you stay mm -hmm. but then there seems to be a delay what can be done okay so very valid there is delay and um there are so many ways to address delay there are so many things to do when there is delay but <laughs> i'm going to hold the answer i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> So yes, um, this is why I'm here to whet your appetite, really. I'm not here to give you all the gems that we'll be teaching so that you would go over there and you would listen to all that Pastor Kenneth taught and you would surely be blessed. But I know this is a major question in people's hearts and it was addressed. So when there is delay, what should you do? Head over to the podcast. So it's a wrap, people. I mean, I'm sure you've learned a lot, but trust me, as Chiazam rightly said, there's, there's so many more gems in every teaching that we had in the month of september and you know yes. as amazing a teacher as chiazan is trust me she didn't even scratch the surface so you'll be doing yourself a huge disservice if you do not go through those teachings and to, you don't even have to go too far don't worry i'm not even going to tell you to go out of this app just click on the description box that drop down arrow are you saying it all the teachings are there for you to find and you'll Busy see and that audio beautiful video and audio so i mean there's no there's no hassle about all oh, whatever thing you want to do it's available it's made it easy for you but make sure you do yourself a huge service and check every single thing and learn from it and don't just watch it in room yeah people of faith say family say body share share to everyone you know not just because they are you know when you get questions about different things you can share but then share to people that you love let them also know this this is another way for you to evangelize and be learned you know now last recaps do you remember the benders yeah okay so i mean it's so beautiful that god is a good shepherd he's rohi he's jara he's rafa yes and not just in this month of september alone but believe and i know that you see that throughout the rest of your life so yeah come and yeah we'll I want to let you know that like um if you have any questions and it seems like oh I don't really agree with you on this, any mm -hmm. clarity you have, 
probably valid reasons from scripture why you feel like maybe something was wrong and you want mm-hmm. to understand better to be sure that like we all come to like one belief system and agree on one thing you can send us an email our email is also in the description box or you can reach out to us on our socials instagram twitter and we'll be ready and available to respond to you also we'll be continuing the work this month don't miss any teaching 5 p.m on youtube and mixer on sundays you can also join us for ignite prayer meetings on tuesdays and fridays by 8 p.m until next time remain in the providence of god peace